Hi. Okay, thanks for joining me again. I got cut off, so let's finish up the church in Laodicea. And we're in Revelation chapter 3, and we just read verse 19. So I'm going to read it again. It says, Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Okay, so we're talking about how much God loves you. He loves you. And because he loves you, he doesn't want you to stay in the place you are, the place of deception, the place of, of uh, not understanding the purpose for your life, right? And so I just wanted to read Hebrews chapter 12, and let's look and see what God does for his children. He loves us, right? So let's see. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5. You have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? And if you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and respected, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. No one dis Discipline, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Okay, so look at there. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So that's what we have to do. We have to make sure that we are trained by the hardships that we go through. And we have to understand that it, that God's trying to get our attention. He's trying to teach us something. So instead of saying, why God, why is it happening? Say, Lord, teach me what I need to learn. Show me what I'm trying, what you're trying to tell me. This is hard, but go to him and ask him, Lord, produce this righteousness in me. Show me the way. Okay. Okay. So then we know that our job is to be earnest and repent. You know, I'm sorry, God. I have chosen the way of the world. I have tried to live my life under the Babylon world instead of under my uh, under God's rule and reign over my life. So uh, that's what we need to do. We need to repent and draw close to God because whenever we repent, we know First John one nine that if we confess that He is faithful to forgive. So always confess. Come back to the Lord wherever you are draw close to God. And then he says to him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Okay. And we did read that in the last video about um, being seated on the throne of God. And that's Ephesians chapter two. Uh, if I could find it real quick, I'll read it to you again. I love this passage. And he's seated, so Ephesians 2, verses 6, And God raised, him up, raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us, to to us in Christ Jesus, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So it says in verse six, we are raised up with Christ and seated with him in the heavenly realms in Jesus. And in verse one, 21, it says that, he seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in this present age, but also in the one to give. So we will be seated there with Christ above all principalities and powers. He gives authority to rule over the nations. I, I mean, I don't understand it all, but I know it's quite amazing. What we have to do is we have to be earnest, repent, yield, 
Seek God. Seek what he has for us, not what the world has for us. Seek what the Lord has for you and for me. Okay, so then he says to him who overcomes, I give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down at my with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So that's what overcomers do in Laodicea. And let's just recap the other two because uh, we did this over the first four. So the, that's the seventh one. Let's look at uh, the fifth and sixth one. In Sardis, he said, the overcomers, I will never blot his name out of the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my father and his angels. And then in Philadelphia, he says, hold on to what you have so no one takes your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him a new name, the name of my God and of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of the heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. To him who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So um, God has, you know, he does want us to live right and to walk with him, but he has promised to give us great things. And to be a child of God, to be an heir of of Jesus, of God, is um, a, a, an amazing uh, place to be. It is full of riches and glory, but it it is that we would glorify the Father, right? The glory that uh, all glory would go to the Father, and we will be so happy and so content. So I just encourage you that if you find yourself in the city of Laodicea, in the church of Laodicea, where you have lived under compromise and sought the world, just repent and draw close to God because he wants to be your all in all. He wants to be the one that you yearn for and that you desire. And uh, I say that when you do, when you come off the fence and you're no longer lukewarm, you will truly experience what it is to be a Christian because what it is to be a Christian is a beautiful life. It's not an easy life. It's not free of persecution, but it is a wonderful life. Okay, well, we'll talk about uh, Revelation chapter 4 next time. And until then, take care. Bye.